I am AJ from IEMA, and I found out last week some pretty interesting news that you guys probably found out at the same time on the IEMA.com Insights page that um, I was put into a very exclusive club of the Billionaires Club managing a billion dollars worth of SEO. Um, so that's true, and there's a lot of things that I'm going to talk about and how to manage an account like that that are very similar to what Yoan talked about and some of the things that Lauren was talking about. Um, except the scale is much different. So, to give you some idea of the scope and the scale of an enterprise campaign that I'm talking about, Verizon's total business made $131 billion in revenue last year. Um, in comparison, Telefonica Europe, $13.5 billion. So, 10x difference. Um, for another comparison, Google made $75 billion. This is a big company. There are multiple lines of business, there's multiple websites, and there's lots of scale. But scale isn't the problem overall, right? It's certain types of scale. So they are huge companies <clears throat> within Verizon. <clears throat> they have over 2 million URLs in the Google index. Not so much a problem for us. They have 75 subdomains. Pretty typical problem. We're working on it. Um, we deal with sites that are companies that are much smaller that have sites that have 40 million URLs, right? ZocDoc, 40 million URLs in the index. <laughs> So we have technology that can deal with that. Um, the challenge with working with people like this is we can't just go around and talk to people and ask the questions like Johan suggested because they hire 188,000 people. <laughs> you can imagine the size of the team we have to have to support this account, but imagine all the people we talk to, right? So the important thing for us is communication, <clears throat> relationships. How can we deal with hundreds of people, literally hundreds of people during a given month talking to us, asking for something that's important to them, right? And another thing I talked to Lauren about is we're SEOs, so we know a lot about digital marketing, so we can answer all of these questions. You know, we can do almost all the things they ask us to do. We could lick their ear if they ask us to, which I hope we want it, but... So, right, so how do we handle that? <clears throat> um, yeah, that's what I'm gonna talk about. <laughs> so, we have to stay focused, right? We have to stay focused on strategy, and in particular, we have KPIs we have to meet. And I'm gonna tell this story. Um, it's not my story, but it is an IEMA story, and it's a bit old, so you guys might have heard it before, but it's perfect for my deck, so you're hearing it again. Um, we had this director at Verizon that would come to us and always say, where's my hockey stick? Where's my hockey stick, Dave? And so we sent him a hockey stick for Christmas, <laughs> and said, there's your hockey stick, which, um, it was only a relationship we were able to develop because we were able to stay focused and not get drowned by the flood of requests coming in and have systems to deal with that. Um, and it was funny because two months before that, we gave him this hockey stick, right? And so the interesting thing about this hockey stick is not like bragging about what we did, like, yeah, there's a 150% increase here, and it's, it's really interesting, right? Because a technical change to a site, this is a migration, can have a two-week impact of that proportion, right? You do the right things. You work at a company like this that has assets out there. You could do really awesome stuff. But the interesting thing about this is this is hard to do. We had to talk to a lot of people to make that happen. <laughs> and we had to talk to them the right way. <clears throat> so that's, how, that's what I want to talk about. How do we manage externally client relationships? And how do we manage our teams internally so that we can actually support this type of work? All right. External client engagement, we gotta start at the beginning, right? Why did they hire us in the first place? Because clearly, we're the experts. And this is a picture of one of our consultants in New York. His name's Simon Panting. <laughs> if you know Simon, um, he has those glasses. He's actually a little bit older and um, probably more focused than this guy. But, <clears throat> inside joke, sorry. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so why do they use an agency, right? We're, we're industry experts. We're, we're SEO experts, like we live and breathe this stuff. All we want to do all day is learn more about how to get better at SEO. Um, <clears throat> so we're specialists. We also have exposure to data across different industries, and we can learn how is the SERP being affected across total industries, and how is it being affected within your industry, right? And we have tools. I mean, we have free tools like Pulse that can show you different industry volatility, really cool stuff. Um, <clears throat> And we have the ability to have a lot of experts in the field work together and, and learn a lot, right? So I'll talk a little bit more about that internally. <clears throat> so the next big thing that we have to do is, is we have to make friends, right? You can imagine all those people trying to get our attention. 
um, all the things we have to get done. Uh, all of you that work in SEO know that we don't really do anything. <laughs> we never get to touch Verizon's site, so we have to talk to their IT team. And we never get to say, this is the way you should market. So their marketing team and us have to collaborate, and their content team has to produce what we want. So IT guy here and marketing guy here and executive here are never this friendly. Um, <clears throat> so what we do is we learn to speak these different languages. Um, and one thing that, that's like really important to understand in these relationships is this IT manager right here and this marketing manager right here have totally different KPIs. And if you're a smaller company, it's really easy to be like, oh, our KPI is making money. But when you're a big company, it's a little harder to see because your bonus is dependent on, I mean, what's this guy's KPIs? It could be like number of things that we developed this year, number of tickets we service, right? These are real IT KPIs that we hear that sometimes create absurd workflows and projects. Um, <clears throat> preserving resources, saving costs. But the KPIs over here, are a little bit more understandable, you know, maybe reach, traffic, sales, if you're a performance agency like Verizon, sales. So how do we get those two people to work together? Because we do SEO, <laughs> we have to do both of these things. Um, ideally, we get this guy to like us, I think it's a guy, um, and he, uh, he says, yeah, do what they say, they're experts, that's why we hired them. Um, but a lot of times, that doesn't happen, right? We were talking about that before. Sometimes the person who hires the agency has no idea what they do. Um, and it's pretty common, less common now, that people have no idea how to do SEO or, or what it is, right? And so we have to like flip that around. And we have to make friends with this guy. We have to make friends with them. We have to make them be friends with each other. We have to go out to beers after this with all you guys. <laughs> we have to do all of those things to make sure that we can make the impact that we had, make this guy notice us, make this guy be noticed by him, get them a promotion, and have success ongoing. So how do we do it? How do we go like this and have everyone else go like that at the same time, right? So um, the IT team's a really important one. Um, the first thing that we do with them, always, sometime in our engagement, and we always have to redo it because they have turnover, um, is education. And one of the most important things that we educate them about is not just basic SEO because the biggest problem we have with IT is they always already know SEO. Um, we have to teach them that Google is an advertising company and they happen to use a search engine. So when they read a Matt Cutts article that says you don't need to do SEO, they shouldn't listen to that article because all they want to do is crawl your site. And Mobilegeddon is a perfect example of that. Um, they hyped up the entire industry, got everyone saying we're going to affect 1% of the searches. It didn't. Um, what they wanted to do is they wanted to send ads to mobile because guess what? Mobile's here. Everyone's at mobile. And so in April, they said, you got to change your site for SEO. And everyone made their sites mobile friendly. And then in July, they're like, let's send a bunch of ads to those mobile sites that are friendly now. And they made billions of dollars. <clears throat> oh, wait, let's stay on this one. So um, the number two thing that we have to do is speak their language. So um, this is really important. And it comes down to really understanding their KPIs understanding the technology and understanding what they do. So if I go to you know, an infrastructure team or a resources team that manages the, the websites, like the actual um, DevOps teams, and we say, hey, you really have to reduce the number of requests, you have to block these bots, and, or not reduce requests, but reduce these errors and reduce the, the redirect chains, they're going to be like, yeah, I don't really know what you're talking about, and Matt Cutt says not to do SEO. Um, but if I come in here and I say, hey, um, we can really help you guys uh, reduce requests, we can help you save money, we can make sure that the Akamai requests that Google and all these other bots are, are actually costing you pennies to the, every request are gone, um, then they listen because that's what they get bonus on, right? And so we just made friends with this IT team. So the other approach is, is change your angle. Um, so sometimes, sometimes you just have to talk about something that they care about. Um, maybe it's not their KPI, maybe it's something else. So we're talking about um, making sure your experience is consistent across devices, making sure you have really good page speed like Ian was talking about. Um, <clears throat> making sure that your semantic markup is good. Um, but nobody cares because they don't know what any of that means and they don't really see the value of it. But you talk about user experience, and people care about user experience. I mean, that's why they do their jobs, right? It's in their company credo. You know, Customer experience is like the number one thing that they care about. Whether they do or not, it's, it's up in the air. But 
but we know that they're going to respond to that because they can say that to their boss and their boss is going to understand. Um, one of the more important things, and this slide's relevant because of our four-year entertainment cycles or election cycles, um, is you have to understand the political landscape, right? In a company that big, there's bound to be people that are very difficult to deal with. Um, they're already in a system that's very hard to navigate. And you need to understand how to move the way you're supposed to, talk to the right people. Uh, for instance, in Verizon, like agencies don't talk to people above directors. Only Verizon people talk to people above directors. So if you go around that, you get in a lot of trouble. Um, but there's also, there's also ways to um, leverage this the other way, right? So sometimes, for instance, a few weeks ago, um, something's happening and we know that we need to make sure that everybody knows about this because part of our long-term strategy is for them to understand migrations have SEO impact and there's a huge potential for a really good migration we want to do down the road. Um, and so we make sure the director who's going to make the most noise and we know he's going to make a bunch of noise and run away and watch everybody fight <clears throat> and we may literally be on mute watching them yell at each other. <laughs> um, is, he's going to make the noise and that's going to put us in a position to say what we need to about, hey, you're going to lose 15% of your traffic if you do this, and then we get in front of the audience we need to get in front of. And so sometimes you have to know when to rock the boat and know when it's safe to do that. And that takes a lot of experience. It takes knowing the people. It, makes, it means you're friends with everyone, and you know what their bosses are going to care about. <laughs> All right, keeping with Trump. Um, <laughs> the, last, uh, the last part of communicating externally or with clients is being concise, right? You have to get to the point. I, I can tell you that 95% of the emails that I get from a director or above um, is one to two sentences, lucky if there's no autocorrect spelling errors in it, and it has no context, right? So that's how much time they have to ask me for what they want. Um, so if I deliver them a 25-page audit explaining why they need to do this thing, that thing is definitely not going to get read. Like 100% will not get read. So so how do, you, how do you communicate concisely? It's a very important skill. Um, it's very important to know who to give the detail to and who to give the high level to and to speak in that KPI language, right? So if we do deliver a 10-page deck or a 90-page audit, there's an executive summary, and it's short, and it's one page or much, much less. <laughs> so that's the external side. Um, on the internal side, it's interesting. So um, we could do a lot of things. Um, one of them is just be more efficient, right? As a technical agency, we love using technology to empower people. Um, so if we can use technology to empower ourselves, we do. Um, the key thing that we do is one of the things that most consultants are very resistant to, but we track time. Um, because if we can see that certain tasks take a certain amount of time, certain projects, certain things are difficult for us to do, um, we can put our dev resources to that to make a tool to make that really easy. Um, another thing that we're able to automate is reporting. Uh, sounds pretty obvious and boring, but um, we can save hours and hours of time by automating reporting. We, um, we, write, we basically leverage computers to do as much of our work as we can. So, um, you know, for instance, we have to migrate 15,000 news articles from one site to another, and a lot of them are similar. We're going to write an algorithm to figure out if they're similar and just write the redirects for us because we're not going to read 15,000 articles to do that. Um, we could do Someone asked about international before. We can do um, href lang matching with an algorithm. So you just put it in your sitemaps without us doing all the work of like, this is the German one, and this is and reading all the different languages. So some really cool stuff that we can do there as a technical agency. Um, the next thing is, is building a system, right? So we have to be able to maintain the requests that are coming in. And one of the most important things that we do Um, with our clients is, is we, um, we have different ways for them to interact with us. So in this case, this is a form that they can enter their task and it will go right into our project management system with our naming convention and we can report on it. We can know immediately if this is a high priority task, when it's due, and we can get it assigned out or we can push it off till later. Um, one of the most important skills that we have to develop, thinking about you know, hundreds of requests that we're not gonna do. You know, we work at an agency, like we, we know we have to go home with stuff we didn't do. Um, we have to be able to tell people no basically say, we're not going to do that. But obviously, we're not going to say it like that. We're going to say, hey, we want to make you millions of dollars over here. Remember, we're going to focus on this. This is the tool that helps us do that. And so what we were able to do last year was support the IT team with 426 hours of our time, um, 368 tickets tested. So that's like QAing SEO requirements and making sure that 
what they launched is actually right. And there's a lot of time that goes into that because it's usually not right when it gets launched. Um, and then 39 SEO releases, which means we were up between the hours of 11 p.m. and 4 a.m., depending on your time zone. Um, so the middle of the night, making sure that the launch the next day was going to meet the SEO requirements. <laughs> okay, so the last two things that I want to talk about, um, and this is pretty exclusive to agencies and, and how we manage it, um, but, but we make great consultants. And the way we do that is we make sure that we focus on three skills that people have to be experts in. It's a pretty broad way to say it, but of course everyone here is a technical SEO. Um, so first, if you want to be a senior lead on an account like Verizon, you have to be one of our best technical SEOs. But you also have to be really good at client services, right? You have to talk to all these people. You have to be able to talk to an executive. You have to be able to talk to an IT guy. And those are not the same conversations. <laughs> and then the last part <clears throat> is project management. You have to be able to manage all these tasks, manage your team, and make sure that people aren't getting overloaded and burned out. So being good at all three of those skill sets is kind of what we call the trifecta. It's why I've spent more time than I want to interviewing all the time when we have to scale. Um, but, but that's how we do it. Um, we also train people internally. And um, that's the last part here. So we build a really, really positive culture. We know that people are going to get overwhelmed with lots of tasks at times. We know they're going to have negative client interactions. Um, Trump's not a client, but you could imagine. Um, <clears throat> yeah. So we make sure that they have the support that they need to be successful. Um, we, want, we want everyone in our organization to see client issues as a good thing, right? We're problem solvers. So we want to make sure that the mentality is always very, very positive um, <clears throat> and strong. That's it. Cheers. <laughs>